Very glad you're still with us. The conversation continues here on Plus Politics. Joining us, um, after we went on our break, we had a guest join us, uh, Rashid Adegbeiro, political analyst. Pleasure to have you join us. Pleasure to come on again. Okay. Yes, so just before we went on that break, we're talking about the um, comment by the INEC boss. He indicates that campaigns in the Kogi, um, I think either Bielsa or Kogi, um, is going to end 24 hours to the elections, yes. yes. And constitutionally, we know that it is 48 hours before an election. Are we setting a precedence with this? I would say a dangerous precedent. Because if we have the next general election, people are going to climb on this position. That the election should possibly, a campaign should possibly end even six hours to the election. Uh, a breach of constitutional provision is an invitation to, to chaos. It's a signal that rules set are not static. They could be bent to suit whatever circumstances. And trusting the electorate, various interpretations could come in. So I think it's in the best interest of INEC and the nation that whatever provisions we have in the Constitution should be strictly followed. That's where to reassure the people that uh, fairness and justice will play out at the end of the day. Okay, let me ask you this question. Just as part of matters developing in the Kogi politics, there is a case in court, at a federal high court, uh, instituted by a former candidate whose nomination was, you know, nullified by INEG. Um, I think her name is uh, Natasha Akpoti. Uh, she's challenging the candidacy of uh, Yahya Bello, saying that he has dual... Uh, registration as a voter and that is against the law uh, it's illegal and on that premise the, the court should uh, dismiss um, his candidacy she's not stopping there she's also saying that he should be barred from contesting for public office for net 10 years i want to get your reaction do you see a disqualification coming so close to the elections well um one thing I know about Nigerian law is, uh, is this. As long as the governor is still sitting down there as a governor, he still has the immunity. And as the concern, in respect of the immunity clause, you cannot, for any reason, um, take any governor to court. So maybe or maybe not. I'm not a judge and I'm not a lawyer that can easily interpret that particular. But I, one thing I know is this. The, 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 the information in respect of the dual registration was actually brought to limelight by Heineck after the last election. I think it was even after uh, Yaya Bello was sworn in as the governor. Heineck actually brought that in. They actually gave the information how to which we are all aware. And I know that Heineck know the necessary things to be done, the necessary actions to be taken in respect of that. And, but nevertheless, Heineck has the power to disqualify anybody. It's not a matter of taking someone to court now. INEC has that power, the, the authority to disqualify anybody contesting for any position that has gone contrary to the uh, electoral law, which is one of them, dual registration. He registered in Abuja, he also registered in Kogi State. So for me, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, it should be within the purview of the INEC, the electoral body, to take action. But in respect of the court, I cannot take the decision because there, maybe there are some things that are attached to the immunity clause that I don't know of. Uh, let me, what's your perspective on this? Well, the issues raised concerning the dual registration. dual registration is a simple issue to resolve uh, because we are working in the manner of uh, data capture, uh, capture your fingerprints and so on. If Yayabelo had committed this offense, like my colleague said, it's so easy for INEC to determine and take appropriate action. If INEC should pass or approve the, that candidature, there are some possibility that might have been some other developments. Yeah, but if, if, if you're talking about INEC making, you said it yourself, that INEC brought this issue to the fore um, in the last election, uh, but nothing seemed to have been done. He contested that election. He came out as the governor. This is the second term, and somebody has decided that since INEC is not doing anything about it, I'm going to take it upon myself and take the matter to court. Are you saying that the court does not have 
you know, the ability to say your candidacy has been nullified? The court could take any decision based on available evidences presented to the court. Okay. Uh, the onus rests on the accuser to prove beyond reasonable doubt that Yabelo got himself entangled in double registration. If that can be proved, then the court will take decision. That's why we have the courts. Okay, let, let's paint a scenario. I, I'm not preempting the court judgment, but the PDP has already issued a statement in that regard, suggesting that should the court rule, then the APC might not fill the candidate in the Kogi state elections. It, if the court rules in this matter and by some unforeseen circumstances, ANEC complies with that ruling, what happens? to the APC, the ruling party in Kogi State. Do you see such a scenario occurring? And if it does, what are the likely outcome? Well, uh, if court rules in favor of the petitioner, it means that APC will not have any candidate because the deadline for substitution of candidates is gone. So what that means is that, yes, APC, if the ballot paper has been printed already, is already there, so all they just need to do is any can, any any vote that's going to APC should be cancelled, and the next person on the line will be declared as the winner, because the, for uh, for for INEC to substitute APC candidate after deadline, it shows that INEC is in is sentimental to a particular party than the other, because a lot of things happened in during the last general election, whereby some candidates were uh, disqualified from election and were not allowed to even be replaced. So I don't expect INEC to do so if truly is, is a law abiding city, what's it called, uh, mm -hmm. electoral body, yeah. Uh, just before you came in, we talked a bit about the possible challenges that might come up for INEC, especially seeing that this is like a test for them. They've gone full cycle. That's the language that's trending uh, on this particular subject. Do you see challenges and how do you expect them to address it for the Kogi and Bias elections? Well, there are so many options open to INEC if the court rules in favor of the petitioner. Uh, as a law-abiding organization set up by government, ANEC will stop the APC candidates. And like my colleague said, there's no allowance to substitute within the limited time available. One option open to ANEC is possibility of shifting election date again to allow the process to be completed so that APC could participate. If that is not done, ANEC is writing out a blank check for trouble in Kogi State. That will be civil unrest will break out in Kogi State. And it will drown the quality that ANEC is strive, striving to, to establish in the polity. Uh, I think the risk is too high for ANEC to allow this to happen. So that ANEC comes out whatever information it has that enabled it to approve the candidature of a candidate accused of double registration and which INEC has made public statement upon. If INEC had cancelled the candidature, we will not be talking about this scenario. But now that they've approved the candidature, INEC has to allow the public detailed information of what empowered INEC to make this costly error if the allegation was really through. It's true. Uh, yeah. But to, to, allow, to disqualify a candidate on the eve of pulling, it's an invitation to chaos. We've had it before, uh, more than 50 years ago. That was part of what set the Western region in Nigeria then on fire. The, the potential premiership candidate of the action group was stopped on the day of election. Even after pulling, they were to count the, the votes when power went off and talks invaded the counting center, mixed up all the ballot papers, just to ensure that that candidate doesn't emerge as a winner, because we have to pick the premier from the parliament. Having stopped that candidate because they could not count the polls, it was clear that this was a deliberate plan to eliminate the candidate of the party and ensure the, the opposition party probably may win, or set into crisis the main party whose candidate has been disqualified. 
And before we knew it, the West was on fire. And uh, it was that crisis that eventually led to the first military intervention in the history of Nigeria. INEC should not gamble with the credibility of polling after we've gone through this last general election. Okay, generally speaking now, right, um, there is the terrain there, they said it's a difficult place to conduct elections. What are the possible challenges, you know, generally speaking, that you see INEC um, grappling with and what would you suggest as solution so we don't have a situation where um, there's chaos? Well, the INEC statement did not fully bring to a public picture what are the challenges? Uh, but in your as, as as a Nigerian and an as, analyst, yes, you, you've observed elections in those states previously, and now the whole country has nothing else to focus on as regards election. But Kogi and Bias yes. State come November 16. I'm asking, based on that background, do you see challenges ahead, possible loopholes that INEC can plug, and how would you suggest they do this? For Bayelsa, yes, we know the terrain. Physical terrain is a big challenge that has been on for more than 20, 30 years of election in this country uh, because of the marine nature of the environment. But having identified the problems, common sense should inform that you put in appropriate logistics to overcome such challenges. Uh, the election is a project. It has a beginning and an ending. So you look through the pipeline, identify what the challenges could be, in terms of human resources, in terms of technology, in terms of transportation, in terms of communication, and engage appropriate professionals or yes, engage appropriate, appropriate professionals to handle this logistics project. It's like we want to build a bridge or build an airport. You have a plan. It's too late or so poor in 2019 for INET to be telling us uh, the challenges conducting elections in or by us or any state in the country. You take it as a project, apply modern techniques of project management to it, and you smile at the end of your day. So INA has no excuse to tell the nation that it will face uh, challenges. challenges. We've had this type of thing before from customs. Okay. When the CG of customs said they cannot police the border. I mean, that CG should have lost its job within an hour of that statement. You were engaged to police Nigerian borders against porous imports. And you came and said you cannot police Nigeria's border. You have no, there's no reason for you to be on seat again. Okay, um, we have a little time left on this uh, part of the program. So I'm going to ask you this question. Uh, basically, some people are saying, well, we've not talked about Bayelsa a lot because it, does, it seemed to be relatively calm there. So that's what some uh, most uh, analysts are saying. Do you agree with this position and is it a good thing? Bayelsa situation politically, we hear of Kogi all the time, but you don't hear so much controversy, it seems, coming from, aside from political in, uh, infighting. Uh, yes, the reason is this. Bayelsa says has always been the one political party system right from the 1999 until this present um, um, maybe election whereby APC has been able to penetrate into that part, uh, into the state. and not only penetrating, capturing some figures to be members of the party in that state. So I, the state has been, apart from that, PDP itself has issues within whereby we have the governor's uh, fashion and we have the former president, Jonathan's fashion. So I, I the APC now is now there also to look at the weakness of the PDP government uh, on how to uh, be able to work on their weakness and also work on it. So the PD, uh, bias has always been quiet because there was no opposition. Now that there is opposition, I don't expect the same thing this time around. So there might be a slight change. Yes, yes. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming on this part of the program. Thank, thank you, you All right, we'll go for a short break. When we return, we'll be speaking about a particular Nigerian governor, governor rather, who wants to return to school and the controversy that is causing. Stay with us. <laughs> 